Hey everyone, my name is Gagan Singh and I'm the creative executive for film, TV and visual media here at SoCan. Here today, I'm here to talk to you about um, SoCan's rights and royalties. So I'm sitting in my home studio here today. I'm a music composer, I'm a music creator, much like many of you, um, I grew up making music, I grew up around music, and that led me to a career in um, writing my own music and writing music for other people's projects. W at the point that you create music, you are creating copyright. And when you're creating that copyright in your studio like I do, there is inherent value to that. So today we're gonna, we're gonna touch on a few of those points. So if we think about the inherent value of music, think about your favorite TV show or movie on, on Netflix that you'll probably watch. Um, do a little exercise in your head. What I think about a lot of times is like, you know, you're watching a movie and you just mute the soundtrack, just mute the score of the, the film or TV show that you're watching, keep the sound effects. But when you remove that music, how is your favorite TV show or favorite movie scene sounding? It's not sounding that great. There's value that's taken out of that when you take the music out of it. In the same way, when you go to a shopping mall, and let's say you get hungry while shopping and you're gonna go to a restaurant, you know, if there's two restaurants side by side, one restaurant has music that's kind of inviting and alluring and it kind of pulls you in, and the other restaurant has no music, it's just silent and you just hear the crowd of people, um, which one are you gonna be more drawn to? You know, on a conscious level, on a subconscious level, music has inherent value. And I think once we agree on that and we agree on copyright, this conversation becomes very meaningful. So let's talk about music and its value today. So music is bought and sold in many ways, right? We have music that's uh, on the radio, so you hear uh, music commercially that's played on the radio, you hear interactive digital music, you have um, live venues and non-live venues, and then you also have music in sync. Um, so talking about sync, sync is again going back to film and TV. When you hear a great song used in a, in a, uh, a movie or a TV show that you're watching, that's called a synchronization. And there's a license around that called a synchronization license. Um, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But again, going back to other ways that music is used. So speaking of the restaurant, retail, music is used in retail. Music is used in online concerts, which was a big one during the pandemic. That's the way a lot of artists were um, supplementing their income. Um, online, in the way we, we use and sometimes abuse our online habits these days. Music is such a big part of that. For everything from YouTube to any website or any app that you're using, they all have music and audio as a part of it. So the value in music is called a copyright. So when I sit here in my home studio and I write some music, no matter what, I'm creating a copyright at that point. That copyright has two revenue streams. So that can be, if you were to divide it out into a little pie or into two lanes, one lane would be called your performance right and the other lane would be, be called your mechanical right. So your performance right is um, when rights holders that are entitled to claim royalties on the public performance of their works. Um, so that includes anything like, yeah, it could be an actual performance, like, you know, you performing at a concert live, that's a, you know, that's a public performance. But a public performance of your, of your music when it comes to score is also if you write the soundtrack of a score on a TV show and that TV show is playing on cable, every time that plays, there's um, a, a performance revenue that's generated for you. And that's where SoCan comes into the picture. There's also, as we said, there's also a mechanical right. The mechanical right is, think about something where you would tangibly buy um, the, co you would, sorry, you wouldn't buy the copyright, you would tangibly buy the music. So when you, like for example, we had CDs back in the day, now we don't. But if you're gonna buy a record on vinyl, that's a mechanical right. Um, so rights holders are entitled to claim royalties on the reproduction of their work. So we, 
so at SOCAN, we also represent your reproduction rights as well as your uh, performing rights. So when it comes to performance rights versus reproduction rights, there's many types of performance rights versus reproduction rights. We touched on them. So radio being one, TV, film being another for, for performance rights. You also have internet, um, concerts, um, anything that's internationally aired, that's a performance right. A reproduction right is could be digital streaming, like Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, Google Play. All of these are reproduction rights. So there's still a mechanical royalty that's generating every time your song streams on Spotify or Apple Music, for example. There's also... Um, you know, a broadcast mechanical that's generated from radio and um, other media avenues that way. And last but not least, like I said, vinyl, that's another big reproduction type that, um, you know, you may come across through, uh, in your career. So now that we know about public performances versus reproduction performances, um, let's talk about shares. So in the shares of a copyright, there's a writer's share and then there's a publisher's share. The writer's share is inherently yours as a writer. So when I sit here and I compose some music, I'm the copyright holder and I wrote the music, I wrote the score, I wrote a little piece, you know, a little concerto, a little piece of piano music, let's say. Um, that 50% of the, of the total copyright, 50% of it being the writer's share, right away, I own that. The other 50% is the publisher's share. So that would be going to my publishing company if I have a publishing deal. Now, some people also have their own publishing company. Some people negotiate different versions of a publishing deal. Something called an administrative deal is a very common type of publishing deal. And those can go from giving away anywhere from you know 10 to 20% of your publisher's share. Um, so th it's very important to understand the two different shares within your copyright. Um, when you imagine a pie that's 100%, 50% is always gonna be writers and 50% is always gonna be publishers. Um, or you could look at it as a 200% pie where 100% is your writer's share and 100% is publisher's share and together they create 200% total. Now I'm gonna talk to you guys about something really cool that I'm very passionate about, being an audio visual and screen composer myself. So when it comes to music for film and TV, there are really two types of music that a composer like myself would work on. So there's something called a score, which is writing an underscore for you know, a long format TV show or movie or you know, maybe a short 30 second TV commercial. That's called a score, right? The background music that you hear. Um, then there's also a sync, um, and a sync is an, a, a pre-existing piece of music, which typically is a song that gets licensed by a music supervisor into, again, something that could be long format, like a TV show or a movie, or it could be something shorter format. Um, syncs are just as common as an underscore. Um, that's more like a bespoke piece of music that's, that's composed, you know? Um, the way I look at a score is it's really written to accompany a motion picture, generally around the dialogue and sound effects. So I'm really wrapping my music around the rest of what's going on emotionally. And um, there's a technical aspect to that, but there's also very much uh, an emotional aspect to that. So you're, you're really making sure you're hitting these emotional cue points that a director um, or a TV producer may need. The score comprises of orchestral, instrumental, and or choral pieces, which we called cues. Um, cues also generate something um, here at SOCAN, which are cue sheets. So you as a composer, you may need to be filling out a cue sheet. There may be someone in the music department uh, for the project that you're working for who will be filling out a cue sheet. And that cue sheet is gonna comprise of the score and um, any basically basically any music that's used in the project. When that, when that cue sheet is submitted to SOCAN, um, then SOCAN turns around and figures out uh, who to pay through that cue sheet. So the cue sheet is, is very important. 
Now coming to sync, um, the, synchroni uh, the sync is really about a synchronization license. So that's pre-existing music, like I said. And it's, it's really a license that's granted by the copyright owner themselves, um, of the owner of a composition to allow a piece of music to accompany that motion picture. And typically these are songs, right? So the Screen Composers Guild of Canada, which is a fantastic association that you should be a part of if you're a Canadian composer, um, they offer many benefits and one of them being a sync license agreement template that they have on their website um, that I believe, I don't even think you have to become a member to access that, although if you do become a member there's many other benefits. But looking at those agreement templates really gives you um, a better understanding of what's going into your sync license agreement. And I'm always a proponent of doing your homework before the opportunity comes. You know, it's like Quincy Jones always says, um, luck happens when preparation meets opportunity, right? So the goal is to always be on top of your music. So that should give you a bird's eye view of what we do here at SoCan. SoCan is really a PRO. Um, they're a performance rights organization and but they're not only that, there's some really cool elements that me and my creative team here do at SoCan. Um, there's, also many, there's also a few other aspects to SoCan, such as the SoCan Foundation. So here at SoCan, the foundation takes care of um, grants, which involve um, uh, travel grants for emerging artists, uh, career development opportunities, work commissioning, um, they have awards, so you know. Let me tell you a bit about a, cu a couple of award examples here. So there's an Indigenous Songwriters Award that's given out every year. There's a Black Canadian Music Award. There's Her Music Awards, Young Canadian Songwriters of the Year Awards, Young Composer Awards, Emerging Screen Composer Awards. I mean, you know, I wish I, when I was, um, you know more of an emerging artist, emerging composer, I wish I had opportunities to some of these awards because they really take you to the next level and you know there's, there's financial benefit to that too. So for more information to that, please visit socanfoundation.ca. So me and my department do some cool things like I was talking about. Um, along with the foundation, we work very closely with them. Uh, we offer a lot of creative support. So. So first off, we have offices in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and now in LA as well. So us as A&Rs or creative executives, we're really here to support from the ground level all the way up to from our emerging artists, to our establishing artists, to our, you know, our top earners at SoCan. We're here for everyone and we're here for them in all our major cities and we try to get out to everywhere else that we can as the as the year goes on as well. So it's really important, I think, for me to let you guys know that, um, you know, our relationship with you guys is one on one. Uh, I'm a creator like yourself, so I can really understand, you know, some of the problems, some of the life situations, circumstances, challenges that you may be going through. Um, you know, working in a creative environment, um, building your own dreams, uh, in this industry is not something easy to do and it takes a long time for many people. So um, I think it's very important and it's very crucial that we have this creative support that we do. So some of the, here are some of the things that we offer. We offer craft development. Um, so those include songwriting camps, new to SoCan now, scoring camps for composers. Um, we offer co-writing sessions and co-writing help. Um, so if you're looking to build yourself up as a songwriter, build more confidence in the studio. If you want us to pair you up with a producer, um, those are things that we do. We also offer advances to um, our artists. So you can check in with us every so often, maybe a couple times a year to see if you're eligible for one. And what we'll do is we'll see if we can advance you on your royalties. Um, so sometimes it's just a good chunk of change to have upfront. Um, rather than waiting on your royalties on the back end. So it's, it's a really nice kind of financial service offered as well. We also have SoCan Sound Lounges that um, they were closed unfortunately during the pandemic, but now uh, as we've um, come out of the pandemic in our four major cities, we offer sound lounges and kind of little studio hubs where 
Um, us a rs will curate artists, writers, producers, top liners getting in the room and, you know, writing their next session. We also offer um, uh, international support with our SOCAN houses that we call them. So we have a SOCAN house in LA and a SOCAN house in Nashville. What is a SOCAN house, you ask? So a SOCAN house is really kind of like an Airbnb where you can kind of situate yourself, you can stay for a week, and you just got to pay the cleaning fees, which are very minimal. Um, so it's a really good deal. So you get a place to stay, and within that place to stay, um, you know, just like an Airbnb, it has everything you'd need, plus it has a little studio. So you'll get your little monitors, you could, you'll have an audio interface, you can bring your laptop, you can set up your guitar, your mic, and you know, you're good to go. You know, you're not, you're not losing any creative time, because our goal of our creative team is to help you guys be as creative as possible. The other thing we do, which I feel is super important, is profiling and highlighting our members uh, throughout the year. So we really want to recognize their accomplishments and their achievements. So we here at SoCan, we have the SoCan magazine. Um, so our editors will um, and writers will write some you know, great articles and highlight on some of the great happenings throughout the year. If there's a cool achievement, if there's a really cool story on um, you know, a certain project that you were involved in musically, that may be something that we can feature here at, um, for our Words and Music magazine. A lot of the industry reads that magazine, so it's, it's, it's something really cool uh, to have as some recognition. The other thing we have is the SoCan Awards. So the SoCan Awards are something that happen every single year, um, and our nominees will be um, uh, you know, given recognition and highlighted uh, for their work uh, annually. So I think it's something that's great. It takes place in Toronto and then in Montreal as well uh, every other year. Last but not least, we offer networking events in all our major cities, um, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and LA. Um, we'll have family and friends events where we'll, we'll invite out industry and we'll invite you out as well. So there's a lot of kind of career development that can happen for you by meeting under other industry people. Um, so, you know, if you're looking, um, you know, to work with a certain publisher or something like that, you know, that, that a connection may happen at our, one of our events. So again, it's very crucial that you guys keep in touch with us. Um, and I'll be sure to lay out my email for you at the end of our session here today. So I'm going to talk to you for a second about the SOCAN member portal. So this is one of the added values for you signing up with SOCAN. So when you sign up with SOCAN, first of all, to be very clear, www.socan.com, when you sign up to be a member, it should take you less than 10 minutes. We always tell everyone, it's literally like making a Facebook account, you know, on social media. I mean, people do that all the time. It takes less than 10 minutes. Why wouldn't you do this to, you know, uh, make sure you're, you're getting your, your back end of, of your catalog, right? Your value. So when you get into the member portal, you can view your quarterly statements um, pretty easily. Um, and you can also, there's also a very cool feature that I'll tell you about that I, you know, even me as a composer, as a SOCAM member myself, I use. Um, there's a royalty calculator, which is very cool because it'll show you, you can calculate um, according to, if you really know, like if you have your cue sheets handy and you know what you've worked on, let's say for a score, for example, it'll tell you what like a main theme will be worth percentage wise versus a background theme. And you can start to kind of make little guesstimations out of that where you can calculate what your next royalty statement may look like. Um, and it's just, it's good to, you know, be on top of those things and, and uh, you know, be aware of that. Um, the other thing is you can view your catalog, which is like one of the most important things to do is make sure you want to make sure you're in there as the writer or as a publisher. If you're a publisher, um, you know, your splits are correct. Um, I always take a look at that every so often, especially if there's something, a project that I'm not in charge of that, which happens a lot where I've done music for something and I, I just want to make sure that, you know, everything looks all good. Um, on the back end there in, in the member portal. Um, you can also submit per performance information. So 
For example, if you did a live show recently, um, your set list, you can submit that over in the member portal and then that should be taken care of there. So collectively, it's just a nice little space to, you know, uh, handily review and, you know, look at um, not just your statements, but have your resources handy so you can see what's what's financially going on with your with your back end of your royalty statements. So I hope all that information was worth your while. I think it is. Um, me being a music creator myself, I think there's no one better than a music creator to talk to another music creator and tell them how important a PRO like SoCan is in their life and, and could possibly be life changing, right? Um, it has been for so many, uh, including myself. So um, I hope you value uh, you know, some of the words I was able to give you about what we do here at SoCan. Um, for more information, I want to make sure you have all our information. So we offer high level customer support from our SOCAN information officers. Uh, the number is 1-866-307-6226. So once again, it's 1-866-307-6226. And that's from Monday to Friday from nine to five. Um, if not, if you want to take it online and and take it through email, it's members at SOCAN.com. So, it, so it's M-E-M-B-E-R-S at SOCAN.com. And then for social media, if, if you're someone like me who just prefers connecting on social media, um, connect with us at SOCAN Music. So it's on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, what have you, Facebook. It's at SOCAN Music, so S-O-C-A-N-M-U-S-I-C. -S -S pretty easy, pretty standard. And en français, in Quebec, uh, we have our team there in our Montreal office. They run our social media handles at SoCan Music. So it's at S-O-C-A-N-M-U-S-I-Q-U-E. Um, so I hope you guys keep in touch. I hope if you haven't signed up for SoCan yet, which most of you probably have, but if you haven't, I hope you're probably rushing to your laptop now to sign up and uh, it's gonna take you 10 minutes. So. Uh, and then you're going to be earning some great royalties and we'll be talking about your great music soon and highlighting in, a, in our Words and Music magazine. So I'm looking forward to uh, connecting with all of you very soon. Hope you have a great one.